Hello and welcome to Daily Dose Radio, a five-minute-a-day podcast studying the Psalms verse by verse, recorded here in the dining room of the Bible Bistro, located in Sharonville, Ohio. Hey there, friends. Welcome back to Daily Dose Radio here in the Bible Bistro. Come on in here. Let's sit down together and enjoy some fresh Bible study today, five minutes a day, five days a week, studying the Psalms verse by verse. That is what we do here on Daily Dose Radio. I mentioned yesterday my friend David Mize's album. The um, links to find that album and purchase it will be found in the description of the podcast. So if you go there and look in the description, you'll see links to Apple and links to Spotify, and you can get the album there. It's an album of the Psalms. He's taken several Psalms, Psalm 3, for example. Psalm 8 is also there. We'll talk about that again next week. And he's put the psalm to music. He's a very talented musician. I hope that you'll give his album and listen to and perhaps purchase a copy for yourself if you're interested in having some good devotional psalm-based music in your home. Today we're looking at verse 14, just verse 14 today. And it comes at the end of a very interesting passage, doesn't it? Uh, We have been in the Lord's armory. He's sharpening his sword. He's strung his bow. He's prepared all the instruments of death. And he will make his arrows hotly pursue. And we talked about the it is pursuing the wicked because he's angry with the wicked every day. His arrows are going to pursue the wicked. And I said yesterday, but something intervenes. And here's the something. Behold, the wicked writhe, and conceives trouble, and gives birth to falsehood. Now that's verse 14 here in Psalm 7. You'll notice three things. The wicked writhe, they conceive trouble, they give birth to falsehood. Now this verse reminds me of James chapter 1. And in James chapter 1, uh, we find out about the wicked man. There in verse 13, James chapter 1, Let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. So you see, in 14, we have the beginning of this, this sequence of things. Every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust, the wicked writhe, and conceives trouble. When lust hath conceived, it brings forth sin. And then in 14 of Psalm 7, and gives birth to falsehood. Well, here in James, it says, When sin is finished, it brings forth death. I think 14 and James 3, or James 1, 14 through 15, really are similar. I'm sure that James was thinking of this passage when he wrote this in his little epistle in chapter 1. The wicked writhe, that is, they are drawn away. They're enticed. The writhing is they're involved in. I, I really like the way the King James puts that. Let me go back here to verse 14. Behold, he travails with iniquity. You see that? He travails. He's writhing. He's wallowing, wallowing around in his wickedness. Wallowing. That's, a, that's an old Kentucky word, you know, to wallow like a pig. You know, he gets down in the mud and he just, he just wallows in it. Or a dog when he wallows in dirt or in, you know, something disgusting. They just rub and rub and rub and get it everywhere. Or an elephant when he's trying to get that mud all over him. You know, he's wallowing as much as he can to get it all over. Well, that's the idea. The the wicked, they are travailing. They're wallowing in iniquity, in their wickedness. So they're writhing there. That's, that's the whole idea here. And then they conceive trouble. King James says he conceives mischief. I, I like the word trouble better because it gives the idea. But it's conception. You know, something is being born. It's It doesn't come from 
you know, it's not natural. This is something that's unnatural, but it's coming out of the wallowing in the sin. And then it brings forth something. Sin, when it's conceived, brings forth death. So there's a birth that follows. <clears throat> and the birth isn't anything good. Now, I said yesterday that 14 interrupts what we had there in 12 and 13. God is preparing his instruments, but he looks. In 14, behold, God sees something. He sees the wicked writhing, conceiving trouble, and giving birth to falsehood, or as James says, he gives birth to sin, and sin gives birth to death. Rather, sin is conceived, and then it gives birth to death. So God sees that happening, and so it it stops short his work because the wicked's doing his work for him. And then tomorrow we're going to see that he creates a pit, he digs it out, and then he falls into it himself. So God doesn't need to sharpen his sword, string his bow, hotly pursue with his arrows because the wicked's doing that for him. This process is happening, and it's happening in men right now today. God's still angry with the wicked, but something has intervened, and it is their own sinfulness which is going through this process, and death is on its way because sin is bringing it forth. Well, that doesn't stop the sword of God or his arrows or his instruments of death because they're they're going to be final. There's going to be a judgment day because God will judge the wicked. But the wicked are doing a pretty good job of judging themselves. Okay, uh, check out tomorrow's podcast. I hope you'll stop by. It's verses 15 and 16. We'll talk more about this idea here on Daily Dose Radio. Thanks for listening to Daily Dose Radio. For more fresh and delicious Bible studies, podcasts, books, and more, check out the Bible Bistro online and on YouTube. Join me again next time for Daily Dose Radio.